Hi, my name is Steve Hodgson. I'm a physiotherapist and director of Hallam Physiotherapy. Um, today I'm going to talk about hips and some of the particular problems we see through the clinic when people present with hip problems. The first thing to probably ascertain when anyone comes through the door with a hip problem is, is the actual problem within the hip. A lot of people come with pain that they've been told through the hip, but when you actually look at them, it's referred through from the lumbar spine. The spine, uh, the lumbar spine will refer down, usually down the back of the hip and you'll even get sciatica and even some pain around the front of the hip, but it's, it's less common. But you, you will find that it, it is a lumbar spine problem and if you direct the treatment at the hip, it will not be successful. You've got to look at the lumbar spine. So I'd say seven out of ten people I see who do get presented with, with supposed hip pain have actually got referral from some other source and that's got to be excluded. If people do come with um, intrinsic hip problems, they tend to refer with symptoms around the front of the hip, usually into the groin on their side of the hip. This is the most common area, even into the knee, it is possible for the pain to refer into there. The hip is, is a very, very strong joint. It's a link between the lower limb and, and, and the pelvis and into lumbar spine. It's designed for load bearing, and, and for that, we, you know, when we run, we're putting about 10 times our body weight through to the hip, so it's designed to be loaded. A lot of people are present with problems which they've been told that they've got some degree of arthritis and that's probably one of the most common presentations with, with the hip. They're told that they've got arthritis in the hip, they've had an x-ray and that's it, and, you know, two or three years time, they probably need a hip replacement. Well, it, it, it's not quite as straightforward as that. A lot of people present through with, with tightness in the hip because we spend a lot of their time sitting at computers or because we spend time um, driving cars, whatever we do, we, we, we have a relatively sedentary life. If you start to get hip tightness, you will start to get problems within the joint. And now then when you go for an x-ray, it will show possibly that you have some changes within the, the hip joint, which should suggest some mild form of arthritis. The problem with this is that over the age of 30, 40, 50, you will get changes automatically within the, with the hip joint, which doesn't mean saying you're falling to bits, but you are showing some signs of change, which is, is, is a process of, of using hip for about many, many years. It's a bit, I tell the patients it's a bit like telling people grey hair is pathological, it isn't, it's just a process of getting older and, and changing structure. It still works, diet, get on with it. So the hip itself, use it better, it will tend to improve. So if you present with a stiff hip because you, you, you've twisted on it awkwardly or you've been increasing your running, whatever, you have to look at how people use the hip. Exclude where the problems come from, make sure it's not coming from the back and the pelvic position is not contributing to their hip pain. Then you'd meant to look at how they are actually using the hip in the load bearing position. So most of the problems that people have when they're with the hip is usually when they're walking, standing or, or running. It's usually the loading. If you're getting it sitting down, you're hardly suspicious that you haven't got a hip problem, but you're more likely to have a back problem. When you're sitting, you shouldn't really be loading your hips. The hip joint has um, quite a large part of cartilage and ligaments around the joint which keep control of the joint. It's a very, very stable joint. It doesn't tend to dislocate and as such tends to tighten more than anything else. When you're looking from a physiotherapy point of view, you'd be looking at gait re-education. You look at how people walk and many people will come through here who have been limping for many, many years and that's causing additional stress. And it could be the fact that you've sprained your ankle in the past, we have had a knee problem and that's then putting additional pressures through your hip. As soon as you actually start to get people to use the hip correctly, nine times out of ten, they get better. There's only a few cases where people should go on to have to have hip replacements, and if you can, you want to delay that as long as possible. We don't fall to bits. We don't tend to um, wear out. We tend to rust out. It's inactivity. So some level of controlled movement through a joint, even if it does show some level of arthritic change in the joint, tends to improve. But this has got to be under the guidance of physiotherapists, usually. The biggest problem people hit hurts and because of the pain people naturally stop using things. So you start to address with people why their hip is not getting better, what they can do about it. And certainly most physiotherapists I would, I would recommend you look at movement, movement based and try to change how we use things, that is the key. A progressive rehabilitation program aimed at changing your beliefs about your hip, increasing the functional activity is a key and starting to get correct loading through the joint and this comes down to how we use our bodies. If you can change how you use your body and it's not difficult with practice, you can make long-term improvements and you should get significant improvement in your hip problem. Thank you very much. If you require any further information, please look at the website at halmshirephysiotherapy.com. Thank you.